Hello, my name is Will Hallam, and I'm a solution consultant with ServiceNow. Today, we'll be adding a custom monitoring plugin to the agent client collector. The example plugin we'll be installing provides additional checks against the Redis in memory data structure store. The first step in this process is creating an archive to be uploaded to the ServiceNow instance. We begin by changing directory into the area containing the new plugin code. The content which will be stored in the archive should be located in the following subdirectories. The bin subdirectory contains the new monitoring commands themselves. The lib subdirectory contains subcomponents required by the monitoring commands. And because my agent client collector is using the allow list functionality, the allow list folder needs to contain a JSON formatted file which lists the new monitoring commands. And if you need assistance generating an allow list, you can go to the check definitions in your ServiceNow instance and pick any check definition. And then down in the related links section, there's a link entitled generate allow list content. And clicking that link will bring you to a page which lists an example allow list, which you can copy over into your development area and modify as needed. So now that we have all of our content collected as it needs to be in order to be attached to our instance, we make sure we're at that top level directory. And then we use an archive command such as tar to generate the base archive. And with the verbose output flag, we can see the contents which have been added to the archive. Now, the next several steps are optional, but highly recommended. These steps will sign the archive using a TLS certificate in order to mitigate things like content spoofing on the monitored servers. First, I move my archive to a staging area. Then from inside the staging area, I sign the archive using the key to a signing certificate, which I created. In this case, I use the OpenSSL suite to do it, but any um, standard practices that you use to generate certificates will work just fine. Next, the signature file is base64 encoded. Now I create a parent archive with the same name as the original one, which includes the original archive and its base64 encoded signature file. So you can see that the end state archive that I created has the same name. It's just located one directory level up. So if I go up one directory level and then look at the contents of that file, you'll see that it contains the signature file, base64 encoded, and then the original tar archive. 
now that I have an archive prepared, I can use it to create a new ACC plugin in my ServiceNow instance. So first I'll copy it someplace that my browser can access. Then I'll go to my ServiceNow instance in the agent client collector section, you'd go to ACC plugins. Click new. And we'll attach our archive that we just created. And then if we save that, the instance will automatically generate a name for us. Add a description and we'll activate it so that it's propagated out to our mid servers. So now that the plugin is created, I will add a new check definition, which takes advantage of it. That's available in the check definitions module. Select new. And this is an event check as opposed to a metrics check. So we'll make sure we set that type as applicable. And we're gonna be taking advantage of auto generation, which will generate the monitoring command based on the base command name that you put in this field. And then the parameters that you add uh, down below as you complete the check definition. So the command prefix consists of the name of the check command as it existed in that bin directory when we created our archive. And because that exists in our new plugin, we need to add that plugin to this field in the record so that it is propagated to machines which are attempting to run this check. So now we'll save that record in order to enter the flag information. So we'll enter our parameters down here. So this particular plugin takes three parameters. It takes a uh, critical threshold, a warning threshold, and a host specification for connecting to the Redis process on the monitored server. You can populate default values if you so desire.
once you have your check defined, there's a related link entitled test check, which will let you attempt to execute the check against a selected CI. I'm going to go ahead and do that against one of my test Linux hosts. Now, this particular Linux host is not currently executing a, a Redis process, so I should get some kind of a connection failure. But at this point, I'm just trying to verify that the plugin is getting invoked. And so I can see from the output that the plugin successfully executed. It was unable to connect to a running Redis process and it reported back accordingly. So the last step to actually make this check available on one or more monitored servers is to create a policy in the policies module, which contains a filtering criteria to target specific CIs and then links that to a set of check definitions. So I'll go ahead and create a new policy record. And for the sake of this example, I'm just going to look for comments on the CI, which indicate that the server is hosting one or more Redis instances. And then I'll go to the checks tab and locate my Redis connections. And now I can save the policy. Once a policy is saved, you do need to publish it in order for it to take effect. And at this point, our new check will be executing on applicable servers and sending results back to our ServiceNow instance. Thank you for your time today. If you have any questions or would like more information on using Agent Client Collector, contact your ServiceNow account team or join us in the ServiceNow community, which is linked in the description for this video.